So let's have a look at the matrix uh, operations then uh, next. So the first operation that we can think of is adding up matrices, and that's going to be particularly simple. So the thing to, to know or to notice is that we can only add up matrices A and B, so capital A or bold A and bold B, I'm calling them here, only if they have the same number of columns and rows, and they have the same dimensions, basically. So here we have uh, an example. So we have these uh, matrices uh, with three rows and two columns, two of them. And what does adding these two matrices up? It just means element by element adding up those two elements. So in the top left-hand corner, corner of the first one, we have a two. On the top left-hand corner of the second one, we have this one. And if we add them up, we get 2 plus 1 equals 3 in the top left-hand corner of the result. And the same thing actually for all these other elements. We just add up element by element per location these, uh, different, uh, these different elements. So that's a, a simple definition of adding up different matrices. Another fairly simple operation that we can have on the matrix is multiplying it by a factor, by a constant. So basically what this means is if you want to multiply a matrix by a number, I'm just call this number alpha in the example here. What I mean is I'm going to multiply each and every uh, coefficient inside this matrix by the same number alpha. So if alpha is 10, basically we would be multiplying each of these numbers, the 2 and the 5 and the 3 and the 7, the 8 and the 2. We would be all be multiplying uh, these numbers by the same number 10. And if alpha is something different, we multiply with something different. So multiplying a matrix by a constant factor just means multiply each and every element of the matrix by the same coefficient. Okay, so far so good, right? So that's uh, that's fairly straightforward. What's going to be a little bit harder is, or a, bit, a little bit more involved at least, is um, matrix multiplication. So how can we multiply matrices? So to start with, we are going to look at multiplication of a matrix by a vector. So remember, a vector was a matrix with either one row or one, one column. So here we have uh, the second thing, this 5, 6, 7 object here, is a column vector. It only has a single column. So this is a column vector, and we are going to multiply this uh, three-dimensional column vector with this matrix, which is in this case a two by three dimensional matrix. So there's two rows and three columns in this matrix, and there's three columns, uh, uh, three rows and one column in this column vector. So the question is, what, what do we mean by multiplying this matrix with this, uh, uh, with this column vector? So let me first do this uh, actually on paper so that we see what's going to happen here. So let me copy out that same uh, matrix. So we have this uh, two by three matrix. Uh, as a first row, the elements two, three, and zero. And in the second row, we have one, four, and two. And we're multiplying this with a column vector with three rows, five, six, and seven. So what do we mean by that? Well, the following. So what we're going to do is, we are first picking the top leftmost element over here, top leftmost coefficient in this matrix. So this two, we multiply that by five, two times five. We add to that the second element, three, times the second element going down here, so plus three times six. And we add to that, the third element, which happens to be 0, times 7, plus 0, times 7. And that's going to be the first element in the result, resulting uh, column vector that will come out of this multiplication. For the second element, we're going to well, we cover the first row here. Let's now go to the second row. So again, we are going to multiply each of these elements in the second row, with again, with each of the elements in this column vector. So 1 times 5. And we add to that 4 times 6, the second element, the second element here. 
4 times 6, and the third element times the third element down here, 2 times 7, plus 2 times 7. This will be the result, and so we can do that sum, of course. 10 plus 18, that's what 28, plus 0, so it remains 28, so the answer is 28 and for the first element. And the final element, the second element, is going to be 5 plus 4 times 6, so it's 24, so 5 plus 24, that's 29, plus um, 14, 2 times 7, 29 plus 14, I guess that's 43. And this is going to be the result. So what happened? We took a 2 by 3 matrix, so three, col three columns, two rows, and we multiplied that with a column vector, which has three rows, but by definition just one column. What you get out of that is a column vector again with two rows, right? So it has one, two rows, but it's just a single column. So this is again a column vector, but with two rows. And what we did was we basically took the sum of these individual products here, 2 times 5, 3 times 6, 0 times 7, and in the second case, 1 times 5, 4 times 6, 2 times 7, adding those up, gave this result. So this is basically what the operation of multiplying a matrix by a column vector, what that means. So let me look at that again in the, uh, the slide. So here we go here. So uh, just to, to re reiterate this, what we are doing for the first element, the top element, we are multiplying each individual element of this first row with each element in the column of this column vector, and then add up those results. 3 times 6 plus 0 times 7, that gives us indeed 28, like I uh, just uh, computed. And same thing for the, uh, for the second uh, row. We take 1 times 5, 4 times the 6, 2 times the 7, and that indeed adds up to 43, like I promised. Okay, so that's the defini definition of multiplying a matrix with a uh, column vector. So more generally, you know, I just gave an example here, but in general we would have a matrix here on the left hand side with, with, with arbitrary uh, entries, arbitrary coefficients, a11 until a1m and an1 until anm. So this one has actually n rows and m columns. And I'm multiplying that with an m-dimensional column vector. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to take the first, for the first element, I'm going to multiply the first element over here with x1. The second element over here, I would multiply with x2 etc. until the final element a1m, I would multiply that with the final element down here, xm, and I add all those results up. That's going to be the first element of the result. Same thing for the second row, etc. until I get to the last row. And I indeed, I again do the same. So I take the first element over here, multiply that with the top one over here, an1 times x1, etc. etc. plus anm times xm. So what we're doing, we give, we take an n by m matrix, right? n rows, m columns. I multiply that with an m-dimensional column vector. What I get is again a vector because you know, this, you know these expressions are just single expression. This is a single uh, column, so this is again a column vector, but now with n different uh, rows. So this is an n-dimensional column vector. So let me just do for, just to make sure that we know what's going on, let me just do one more example. So let me can do that on, uh, on paper. There we go. So we have an uh, example, second example, one, one, two, three. So this is my, my matrix, a two by two matrix, actually a square matrix, if you remember this, uh, this term. I can multiply that by a uh, two dimensional column vector. So again, what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to find, since this thing has two rows, I'm going to find a two-dimensional column vector as a result. So how should I do this? Do this. For the first element, I get one times two plus two times one. So that's two plus two equals four. And for the second element, I get one times two plus three 
times 1, and that's going to be was 5. So this is the result for this second example. So there we are. And here we see this again. So I take that for the first element 1 times 2 plus 2 times 1 gives me 4. And the second uh, part 1 times 2 plus 3 times 1 gives me 5. So that's uh, the multiplication of a matrix by a vector. And be sure that this is only allowed, as, we, as you can see, if the number of um, columns in this in the, in the first uh, vector over here, or sorry, in the first matrix over here, so this has two columns, it must actually match the number of rows in the um, in the in the row vector that you're multiplying, because we have to sort of match up these different elements with each of the elements over here to find products and add those. Up. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, if you uh, remember the system of M equations with N unknowns, so it in general took this, this particular form, and I told you, well, we can collect these, these coefficients here, the A11 until uh, the AMN, into this big uh, coefficient uh, matrix, and I call this capital uh, boldface uh, A, then if you look at the structure of this left-hand side, so all these different uh, equations on the left-hand sides here, they take exactly that form that we get upon, upon this matrix multiplication, multiplication of a matrix with a column vector. So we can very briefly, in very short notation, write this whole big left-hand side as, you know, if you know this big matrix A, and we collect all those x's into a, a column vector x, so having x1 until an xn, then this left-hand side is just this matrix product A times X. So this whole big rectangle over here can be expressed simply as capital A, matrix A times column vector X. And the right-hand side with elements B1 until up till Bn, I just then call, will be the result, will be an n-dimensional column vector. So this is a very shorthand notation for that same system of M equation in N unknowns. So let's just uh, practice this a little bit. So if we have, uh, uh, let me go again to uh, the paper, if we have this particular example, so let me again copy that. So if we have you know, a very small system of equation with just two unknowns, so two times X1 is the first unknown, plus five times the second unknown, five times X2, equals 4, that's the first equation, and the second equation, 3x1 plus 7x2 equals uh, 10. So this is a system of two equations, but we can write that equivalently in this particular form. So we collect those coefficients here in this matrix, 2, 5, 3, 7, and we multiply this by this column vector of the unknowns, the x1 and the x2. And that should be, the top row should be 4, and the bottom row should be 10. So let me check that by writing this out. 2, 5, 3, 7, x1, x2. So this is a matrix product, a matrix multiplying a... Uh, a column vector. How did we do this again? Two times the first uh, element over here plus five times the second element. And for the second row, three times x1 plus seven times x2. So this is the result, and indeed you see that that's exactly the same as, as what we what we started out with, so that, that makes sense. And it should indeed be equal row by row to these to this column vector 4, 10, this 4, and this 10. So this is just a different way of writing that, uh, that same uh, equation in this particular form over here. So let's have a look. Uh, so here it is again. 
So we can write the same system of equations in terms of this matrix multiplying a column vector and that again equals a column vector. And here, of course, the, this is a two dimensional column vector, it corresponds to the two columns that we have in the, uh, in the matrix. This matrix is a square matrix, it also has two rows, so indeed the outcome is also a two dimensional column vector. So we just rewrote things, right? So this is just notation. It's going to be convenient notation. And the reason why, why we are doing this is because this notation is actually going to help us actually in solving these systems of equations, both small and large, but in particular when they are large, it's going to be particularly useful to actually find some methodology that, uh, that we can write in a convenient fashion. So that was multiplying a matrix with a column vector. What you can actually also do is multiply a matrix with a whole matrix, a more general matrix. In particular, we can do this whenever the number of columns of the first matrix, which would be two in this first example, so it's two columns, one, two, when that matches the number of rows in the second matrix. So this B matrix matrix has two rows, right? So this, these match up, two columns over here, two rows over here, and we can actually multiply those two, uh, those two matrices. So let me again, uh, so it's going to be down there, but let me just again do this uh, on paper to see how that works. So there we go. So we have the first uh, matrix that was uh, 2, 5, 3, 7. And we're multiplying this with the second matrix, which is 1, 2, 0, 1, 3, minus 1. So how are we going to do this? Well, essentially, we're going to do the same, use the same methodologies that we had as what you had with the, uh, the column vector, except that we have you know, three different columns, basically, for each of which we have to do this um, again and again. So basically what's going on, for the first column, for the result, we're going to multiply the first row over here, 2 times 1 plus 5 times 2, 2 times 1 plus 5 times 2, so that's 2 plus 10, that's going to be 12. That's going to be the left top outcome here. We can also do the bottom, just like we did uh, with the um, with the column vector, focusing on this first, still focusing on this first column over here, 3 times 1, that's 3, plus 7 times 2, that's 14, so 3 plus 14, that's going to be 17. That's going to be the first column in the result, but now we have some additional columns, so this one and this one, so we again do the same trick. So we again go to the first row here, 2 and 5, we are now going to multiply this with the second column. So what does it give us? 2 times 0 plus 5 times 1. That's obviously going to be 5, right? 0 plus 5 is 5. So that's going to be the middle column, the second column in this resulting matrix. Again, for the, for the lower value there, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 7 times 1 is going to be 7, of course. So we've covered the second column here. Now we do the same trick. Finally, once more for the third column. So again, we take the first row here, 2 times 2 and 5, multiplying by the, this third column, 3 and minus 1. So it's having 2 times 3, 6, plus 5 times minus 1, that's minus 5. So 6 minus 5, that's of course going to be 1. And finally, the, the final element is going to be 3 times 3 plus 7 times minus 1. That's 9, 3 times 3 minus 7, and that's going to be 2. So that's going to be our result. So basically we have done the same trick of multiplying this matrix with a vector, just that's three times, recognizing this thing as basically three column vectors stacked next to each other. So let me go back to the slide. So here we are, so we see that result. Uh, and this is what we did. So we looked at the first column, so, so the first row of the A matrix, multiplying that with the first column to get the left topmost element over here. So 2 times 1 plus 5 times 2. And we went down to, uh, to compute this uh, second row times the first column. Gives us the, uh, the, the second element in the first column of the result, the 17. And we 
then pursue that uh, same track, but now focusing on the second column. And finally on the third column, adding up those results. And that's basically it. That's basically a uh, the definition of what it means to multiply a matrix. So yeah, yeah, I already showed this. So what I did was I computed a this matrix A, right? This two by two matrix A times this two by three matrix B. So A B is well defined. We could do this. B A on the other hand, so first mod having this one on the left hand side and this one on the right hand side, then we would run into trouble because we wouldn't know what to what to do with the remaining the remaining uh, column here. We would have a one zero and then what is the three going to multiply? So you can only do this when the number of uh, columns of the first matrix coincides with the number of rows of the second matrix. So that's the only way in which these matrix products will be defined. So the number of columns of the first matrix is going to be the same as the number of rows of the second uh, matrix. And the end result, by the way, will be always be a matrix which has as a number of rows, the number of rows of the first one, which is uh, two in this case, and as a number of columns, the number of columns of the second one, which is in this case three. And this is indeed a two by three matrix uh, that results from this multiplication. So that's what multiplying matrices is defined as. It's sort of a funny thing, but you need to get used to this, and it's going to be turn out, turning out to be uh, pretty useful. Let me cover one more example just to get the get the, the hang of this. So let me again do this on, uh, on paper. So here we go, we have uh, the first matrix, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and we are multiplying this by 2, 0, 0, 3. These are two square matrices if you uh, if you notice, so these both are two by two matrices, so they have the same number of rows as the number of columns, two square matrices. So let's work that out. First element is going to be a two by two matrix, will be the result. So the first element will be zero times two plus one times zero, that's zero plus zero, or zero. The downstairs here we have minus one times two plus zero times zero, so it's minus two. Then we have 0 times 0 plus 1 times 3, that's going to be 3. And finally we have minus 1 times 0 plus 0 times 3, that's going to be 0. So far so good, so this is how it works, I just gave them another example. But now you notice that both of these two matrices, they're both square, as I just mentioned. They're both 2 by 2, so they have the same number of rows as the number of columns. So now you might sort of argue, well, now it's actually possible, so here we couldn't have turned around the, the order of these two matrices, but then if they have the same number of rows and the same number of columns, then we might actually also compute the opposite, 2, 0, 0, 3, times this matrix. So can we also compute this one? Yeah, of course we can, so let's just do that. 2 times 0, 0, plus 0 times minus 1, that's 0, and that's 0 times 0 plus 3 times minus 1 minus 3. 0 times 1 uh, plus 3 times 0. Uh, sorry, 2 times 1 plus 0 times 0, and that's 2. And then 0 times 1 plus 3 times 0, that's 0. So this is same operations carried out on the second product. So what we did here was, you know, first took, if you wish, A times B, and here we computed B times A. If you now look at the result, we could do both computations, but the results are actually not the same. So you see these two matrices, the results are different. There's a minus 2 here, it's a minus 3 here, 3 and a 2 over here. So it turns out it actually matters. It matters whether you look at A times B, matrix A times B, or whether you look at matrix B times A. So let's see that here. So I did this computation. So this was the first one, and then I, we did the opposite uh, order of these two matrices, and we did again the same rules, play by the same rules, and we get a different result. 
So, th and that's difficult. So if you have two uh, matrices which are square, then it makes sense to multiply them either as A times B or as B times A. That's both possible because the number of rows and the number of columns all, will always match because they are the same. But the result is not going to be the same. So for matrices, unlike for normal numbers, so it doesn't matter whether you compute, say, 3 times 7 or 7 times 3, both give 21. But for matrices, that's no longer th true. So A times B is not B times A if, you, if A and B are actually matrices, at least not in general. So some, some special cases, of course, they might be, but in the general case, they will not be the same. So this is uh, a special um, characteristic of matrices, actually called matrix multiplication is called non-commutative. That's the, the fancy mathematical term for, uh, for this uh, multiplication of matrices. So that uh, stops basically the definition of what matrix multiplication is. So the next step, which I'll do in a separate video, is to look at an application where, where we see actually why or that perhaps this way of defining a multiplication, a matrix multiplication, actually has some sort of fit sense, makes economic sense, so a fin financial economic sense in this case, because we're going to look at an application in the next video. Uh, applying matrix operations to matrix multiplication, in particular to credit ratings. So see you in the next uh, video.